So what do procedurals do in Substance Painter? So to get to the tab where procedurals are at, you can go to Window, Views, Shelf, and then go to the Procedurals tab. And what they do is they create a pattern. Sometimes it's, you know, like a bunch of circles, or sometimes it's this like boxy checkered pattern. It's essentially a pattern that you can use on an object. Now in some instances, you can use these for hard surface. Like let's say you want like some kind of sci-fi detail on some model, this could be useful for that. Or let's say you just want some noise to make something look more organic. So they use, most of them use fill layers. So you can create a fill layer and then drag and drop a procedural. So in this case, I'll drop cells four into the base color. And now we get this kind of result. And there are different blending modes. So there's UV projection. So if I go to the UVs, you can see what's going on. There's also triplanar, which will try to blend different plane changes of the model. And in some cases, it doesn't really do it, like you can see down here. And then of course there's planar, which kind of just puts it on either side and then stretches the in-between results. And then there's also spherical projection. Uh, for this video, we'll just use UV projection just to go over it. Now, the nice thing about these is that they can also be used in other things. So if you wanted to use it on height, for example, now you have a drastically different type of bench that has this kind of checkered or like fragmented cell look. And you can also adjust the scale so you could increase or decrease. Now this is really nice for textures like if you want to make some textures on uh, hard surface models, this can be really nice. And it can also be used for things like random things like stockings or something. Like if you want to use a pattern like this or something crazy. I've actually seen this pattern in Overwatch. <laughs> so like what they did is they had a flat plane and they used this pattern for a detail, like a decal that's just like flat and then they had an opacity mask on it. So you can use these for anything. You could use them for like rocks. So like let's let's say we want to make this look like a rock or something. I can grab the dirt or the clouds. Let's use clouds three. Drag this in. And then I'll just turn height off for now. But you can see how this could be useful. It, it kind of generates detail and you can increase or decrease and modify it as well. And obviously the larger or the smaller in scale, the more tiling you'll see. So you kind of have to balance that. But you can use it for roughness, you can use it for anything. So I could put it into, I can plug it into the roughness. And now you can see it has this type of effect where the darker parts appear to be more shiny and the white parts appear to be less shiny. So for example, if I turn the color off and then created a new fill layer and then just made it a color, say red, just by adding that procedural to the roughness gives us this result. So like as light hits it, it appears to be more than just, you know, a, a simple color. So there's a lot you can do with these and you can adjust the settings of them as well. There's also 3D ones that require baking. So if we go ahead and just bake this, and then plug in like the Perlin noise. The 3D ones have like a box. So like the 2D, the normal ones are just flat. The 3D ones have like this kind of box, the like cube look. So let's go to this fill. Let's turn off this fill color. So let's use Perlin noise for our roughness. And then let's also do triplanar. And I'll turn color back on, we'll use the same Perla noise. Okay, so this is the result, it's kind of crazy. You can see it's tiling, which isn't what you want. And it does need a position, so that's what it's looking for. Let's try this instead. 3D simplex. And so it seems there's something going on with our position that's kind of getting it to be bugged out like this. Uh, but you usually do need bake information to use those because it is looking for 
the position input. Yeah, UV projection isn't helping. So, <laughs> so that's not ideal. But that's the basics of uh, procedurals. They can give you some cool effects. So for example, if we wanted a pattern, you can get one pretty quickly. And I can put it for roughness. And then I can also use it for height. Now there is an upside to using like the color because you can do things like multiply. So for example, you can do different blending modes. Now height, however, cannot be blended. Height will, whatever the height is, is what it'll use. So if you try to reduce, oops, I'm sorry. Let's change these. If you try to change the blending mode and have it affect the height, it won't. Height will be independent of that. So if I reduce the opacity, it will affect roughness, metallic, and Actually, it might just affect the color. Let me just confirm that. I think it's just affecting the color. Yeah, let's put this down to like zero. Yeah, it's just affecting the color. So blending modes only affect the color. They don't affect the metal roughness, normal, or height. And you can see it doesn't affect the height because if I put this at 0%, you can still see that the height is still taking effect. And to prove that, I can toggle it so you can see. So you can blend the color but and you can do color blending modes with the color, but you cannot do any kind of blending with the height. So if you plug in the height, uh, if you can change the contrast, that's one way to adjust it. You can also invert, but just note that the height is a little bit more finicky and harder to deal with. And you can see here, under this parameter, there's a height setting for the roughness. So that's kind of interesting. So you can kind of adjust that. You can see like what it does. It's kind of giving this like bevel effect. But the, you get some pretty interesting results with these and it's really useful for hard surface. And there's also other things as well. There's like all these different like wood textures and you can use these on other models. But you know, sometimes your UV will make it harder to use them. So depending on how you UV it and depending on how the model is organized and how it's like what it's composed of can change how these affect it but some like some of these organic ones can be really good for like rocks for example or like background elements like environmental stuff so it's definitely worth knowing so that's pretty much it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this find this useful uh, drop a comment let me know what you think and also feel free to check out our turbo squid store where we sell stock low poly game ready 3d models we add new models each week and i'll see you in the next one